Collision Derby is all about crushing, crunching, and crashing. But Adam and Jamie are taking it to a whole new level. They're using rockets to find out if, under any circumstances, it's possible to pancake a callback so much you lose it in the wreckage of a two-truck collision. <laughs> And to do it, New Mexico Tech has lent them their straight track rocket roller coaster. We spell out for you exactly how this is going to break down. When we push the launch button from the bunker, this back sled fires, pushing this front sled down the track to here, where the front sled's rockets kick into gear and carry it the rest of the way down the track. By the time our sled reaches the end of the track here, it ought to be going 700 miles an hour. It will then leave the track, traveling across 20 feet of open space, where it will eventually hit our car back on the nose. Now the car is backed up against that steel plate and that concrete block, and that should simulate our two-truck impact at the speed of sound. So we've kept you waiting long enough. Let's get down to business. Are you ready? I'm ready. You mind if I flip the switch? Go for it. This is Compact Compact Rocket Sled. In three, two, one. Wow! Holy crap! That didn't mess around. Oh no! <laughs> that second stage was a hell of a thing. It was like, whoa, it just disappeared. Now that was fast. Really, really fast. That was unlike anything I've seen before. We've seen plenty of rocket launches. I'm used to speed up of a rocket, but when the second stage kicked in, I was thinking, I've never seen anything go that fast. And then I realized, actually, that correct. I have never seen anything go that fast. Great. Awesome is such an overused word. But that truly inspired awe. And then some. Incredibly, the spectacle of the launch is matched by the destruction of the rocket's destination. Wow, that's a, a lot flatter than the one added on the runway. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call it flat, it's more like shrapnel. What could possibly launch it? <laughs> There's the uh, one inch plate over there. Yes, this twisted, folded, and all around mangled piece of metal. Look at that! was once a square piece of one-inch thick steel plate. I would be called this. It's a freaking potato chip. For an encore of all. Holy crap. This is even the car. And an opportunity to crunch the crucial numbers, Adam and Jamie check out the aptly named high-speed footage. The results are in. At the moment of impact, our rocket sled was traveling at 948 feet per second, or about 650 miles per hour. So our goal was to fuse metal and pancake the car. Did we achieve that? What car? As far as whether or not this test pancaked the car, I have to say between looking at this debris and looking at the high speed shot, I think we did. I mean, cut to. The accident we created out on the runway of the two semi-tractor trailers. And then, take a look at this debris. I feel like this debris could hide in between those two trucks. They'd have to be going 30% faster than the commercial airliner. But still, I believe that we successfully pancaked. Okay, that's the pancaking. But what about the mythical fusing of the two trucks? So we had this massive impact that was able to throw around about 50,000 pounds, like this block right here. Yet, I don't really think that we got anything like a nice, clean fusion. That implies a weld, you know, a nice little surface that stuck one to the other. This is more like, you know, a bomb went off. So this is what it takes to successfully squish a car so small it could be lost inside the wreckage of two trucks. But like Jamie said, there was no fusion, and that means they're not done yet. If we're going to achieve fusion, we need something that is somehow more controlled than what we got in this case. Don't go 